Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Jake. You can also call me atrocious and today we're going to be looking at the top 16 round the start of the top 16 bracket for the Tokyo Japan One Piece trading card game championships in OP08. I'm very excited to see this although we've seen Red Purple Law utterly dominate the last couple tournaments, you can check those out on the channel if you have not already. This is a new opportunity to see new exciting decks, innovations, and potentially some leaders and decks that could counter and take down Red Purple Laws. So let's get this started. So first we're going to be talking about the meta share for the top 16. The second big tournament in a row, Red Purple Law at 10 participants double digits last tournament was 11 this tournament at 10 going to be another strong showing overall for the starter deck 10 leader red purple law there are a couple other leaders that have two each in this bracket it's going to be a nell and opo7 rob lucci and then one deck each for starter deck 13 black yellow luffy and then a new entry into the top 16 of opoa one we have not seen yet Calgara. So by the title and thumbnail, you already know what the matchup is of this video. It's going to be Calgara and Red Purple Law. I'm excited to do this one. I think Calgara is probably, honestly, the best OPOA deck to come out of that set. Best leader to come out. And it's going to be a really cool match, I feel like, to see how this deck specifically functions, not only with the new Sky Island cards that came out in OPOA, but the old Sky Island cards that got printed earlier when Anel dropped. Just to be transparent, this is not my stream. This is the official live stream. If you want to go check that out, not hear me yet, feel free to click the link in the description below. It'll take you right to the stream so then you can watch this for yourself. Maybe not have to wait a day for my videos to upload of this tournament. But for those of you that want to stay, let's get into it. Players cutting the decks, playing it out. We haven't seen who's going to be going first in this one. But if we think about the on play, right, if we think about the different curves, I think even curve is probably good for Calgara. They run the Ohm Holly engine. That's going to be a really nice one. They also run a new engine with a vanilla Calgara and a Mont Black Nolan. So with the Mon Black Nolan being five and the leader skill costing one overall, I'll go over that leader skill real quick in case you do not know it is a brand new leader. Dawn times one when attacking, play a character with Shandian Warriors from its type from your hand that has a cost equal to or less than the number of Dawn you have. Then if you played a card, put the top card of your life into your hand. So after seeing Calgara go first in this one, I don't know if they actually won the uh, rock, paper, scissors or not. I wasn't watching. I was reading the effect. I think even is probably a pretty good curve for this deck overall. Being able to use that one Dawn to play down a Calgara vanilla, right? And then the Mont Black Nolan, Norlin, you can play with the rest of your five Dawn to be able to replenish that life that you took from your leader skill. So going to be very interesting. We see the Calgara take the hand right away. They are not going to mulligan and neither is this red purple law. We'll see exactly what each hand is in a minute. So it looks like the Calgara has a pretty good hand right now, especially in a little bit. You've got some early pressure with the Ohm and Holly getting some double characters down, and you do have that combo like I mentioned with the Calgara there on the far left, and then the Mont Black Norlands on the right side, so could be a good showing from this deck. We'll see exactly what they continue to draw in this game though. The Red Purple Law having a decent hand of their own. They've got some minusing effects in the Otama and the Law, that's that Trafalgar Law promo that minus is 2,000 power. You got a Rush Zoro in hand. You got a Tony Tony Chopper Blocker, which with Dawn times two when attacking does also do some minusing effects for you in terms of power. And then a Sachi Penguin to be able to early replenish your life, especially against a deck like Calgara Sky Island Engine. Could be really good if you want to use the leader effect early to be able to bottom deck one of their characters that they're going to splurge on and uh, use Sachi Penguin to replenish. So 
The first Dawn turn going to be a Dawn and pass over to the Red Purple Law, getting another Sachi Penguin, which is nice. Usually only need one in a game, but it is going to be nice for a 2k overall and nothing to do, so just passing it off to Calgara now. Calgara getting a, another Holly, might be playing a Holly this turn just to get some early pressure after this 5k swing connects with a pudding, and that's exactly what they're going to do, playing that Holly and saying, you know what? I've got two Hollies in hand. I'm going to be able to play one of them off of the Ohm. Might as well get these characters down fast as possible. And so going to be swinging five, this Trafalgar Law leader. Going to be hitting a life. Going to get that Norland. So the Norland, three of them in hand. Could be good if the Calgara sticks. It is an 8,000 power character. And then with the Pudding playing that down in the Otama, Going to be using leader effect to bottom deck that Holly, get one back at least from the pudding, and then play this Sachi Penguin to go right back up to four, exactly where they were before using the leader effect, showcasing the early game strength of this deck. No Black Maria in this, but the pudding doing just as much for the deck overall. And so another Holly top deck, that's two Hollies in a row, going to be swinging with the Calgara not playing any characters using that leader skill overall, but is going to be swinging six at lead. And so you could take this one, go down to two very quickly, and that's exactly what they were going to do. Not really confident in taking away any of the counter in hand. It's going to be a Gordon, which is really nice for what eventually gets played in this Ohm right here. The Ohm is going to look at the top five, going to try to find a Holly, but he looks like they're not going to be able to find one in hand. A couple ohms in there and an L4, but the Satori and I believe the other one was a Calgara is not going to be able to get a Holly in hand, but they already had two in hand, so they're going to play one down. Passing off the turn after that, going to be a Raju top deck. Raju is real nice. You currently have seven cards in hand as the red purple law, and so we could see the Gordon Raju play to be able to have five in hand. So at, what is that, six Dawn now at this point, you could play Queen, establish a blocker real quick, do a Dawn minus, draw some cards, and then play the Gordon. And then I believe off of leader effect, playing the Raju would get you five in hand overall. So that might be a play that they end up making. The Sachi Penguin will swing first as a 5,000 power character ready to attack. And it's going to be a Holly counter. No real need to play any more Hollies at this stage of the game because you're going to be at 7, I believe, next turn. And that 5k swing from leader is going to be a Rush Ace. Rush Ace, a really good card for yellow decks overall. Can't play it off the leader skill, but is going to be something to keep an eye on, especially as the uh, Calgara now is at 3 life. So, after playing that queen, going to be drawing a Eustace Captain Kid and what looks like a Kid Killer, I think. Two pretty good cards, I feel like, for this deck overall. The Kid Killer is going to be very, very nice for the late game, especially. So you got to think about what you're going to trash right here. I think out of this hand right now, the Zoro is probably the card that you want to trash. The Zoro, just we've seen this time and time again in these red purple law games that the Zoro, especially if you get it off a queen or something, it's just a real easy thing to trash, especially if you have other rush characters in hand. So after getting that Dawn back from the pudding, going to be resting one, playing that Gordon, like I mentioned, and bottom decking the Ohm. Remember that the Ohm only gets the power boost when you're at two or less life, so might as well get rid of it now before it gets that boost. So going to be bottom decking that ohm, and here we go, five cards in hand, playing the Raju. Going to be drawing two cards, excellent, not excellent, excellent sequencing from the red purple law player on the left side. I'm going to pass back over to Calgara now. Now, at this point, getting a 200 million volts of Maru there, you could use your leader skill to play the vanilla Calgar in hand and use that Month Black Norland that I had mentioned earlier. Could be good, especially if the Calgara ends up staying for multiple turns. 
to chain these different Norlands overall. So going to be attaching one and swinging with the Holly right here. Thought they were going to attach it to leader, but looks like they might be swinging a six from Holly and a six from leader overall. You're still going to be able to get that Norland in play. So the six from Holly right now, I don't know if that's at the Sachi Penguin or at leader, but it looks like they're thinking about countering out and it looks like they're going to block and then counter out seeing what they want to pitch looks like it's going to be a useless captain kid blocker overall a card that we see very valuable at times but only really when you have black maria in play i feel like is when i see it so the calgara is going to be played off in that leader skill the 6k swing the effect drawing a flame split off life flame split is a really cool one counter card or activate main card so, but if they play the Norland, they're not going to be able to play that Flame Split. Getting that 2k out of there, it's going to be the Mont Black Nolan. Since they have that Calgara, going to be replenishing a life and getting two of these characters down for essentially six dawn. So, unfortunately, the Flame Split is not going to be able to be played. The Flame Split, a very, very good card in OP07 counter or main. Give up to one of your leader character cards plus 1,000 power for the turn. Then if your opponent has two life or less, which this Trafalgar Law does, rest up to one of your opponent's four cost or lower characters, especially in the red-purple law matchup. Such a good card to be able to play because almost all of these characters are four cost or less. So now at five dawn overall, thinking about playing four, could be playing one of the toy laws over this Otama right here. Going to be hard playing a Reiju instead. The Reiju is going to draw two cards. Looking for a Gordon or a Raise Max at this point. Not finding one. Getting a what I think is another Tony Tony Chopper. Or maybe a Pudding and a toy law. So going to be thinking about where they want to go right here. The I think I think it was the Pudding that they drew. They, they look very similar, those two cards right next to each other. But with one Don left, going to be using the leader effect and going in and playing what looks like the Toy Law. Oh, took that back real quick. Maybe thinking, like, if I play this down, I have to get rid of the pudding and I won't get the Don back. So swinging five with the leader first before they do anything this could either be at the holly or the calgara not 100 percent sure where this is going to go but you're in a tricky situation right the only kind of counter that you have in hand because you swung six with the holly is those mont black norlands and so if you want to chain this these life which is very strong and a good idea overall you got to either take this life or get KO'd right here. A very sticky situation overall. And it looks like it's going at the Holly. It looked like they were reaching at the Holly there at first. I, I would be fine getting KO'd off of this, I feel like, at this point. And it looks like they're actually going to counter with the Norlands. So only one left in hand. Only going to be able to chain life one time. Overall, going to be another 5k swing at that Holly and KO'd right there. Only two characters now on the field. And with a Raju that is still able to swing, going to be going ahead and doing that now, even with only the one Don left. So going to be taking that life. And it is look like it is going to be a possible trigger. Not 100% sure what this is going to be. It looks like it's going to be a Satori. So this is Tori. Pitching the 200 million volts of Maru is going to be another Bonnie on the field at this point. So going to be attaching one, the final Dawn, to the Pudding going to be swinging five. We see this at times when you feel like you're good on the Pudding and is going to take another one. It's another Rush Ace. So the non-counter Ace is really playing a factor right now, I feel like, in this hand. Not very much counter at all because remember that Flame Split is only a 1,000 power boost. So... We'll see exactly where this continues on there. Still could use the leader skill on this turn right here to be able to play a character down. You could play something like the Kid and Killer, right? You could maybe try to establish another pudding on top of it if you want. So then the pudding doesn't get KO'd overall. You would 
that would be an interesting situation. You could try to establish a body like the uh, Trafalgar Law. You do have a law blocker as well. The law blocker could be very nice, but just going to pass. Not going to use the Dawn Minus saying, you know what? I want the extra Dawn into this next turn. I can't bottom deck anything anyways, and I got a full board, so why not? So at now 9, Dawn, I believe, in this. Going to get a Frankie top deck. Frankie is a nice 2K that comes out of OP07, but not going to be something that overly helps you at this stage of the game. So resting 5, that could be for one of two things. It could be for the Norland which would help replenish a life because you do have that Kalgara on field, or could be for that ace, that rush ace, to be able to apply a ton of pressure overall. So I think at this point, if you're the Norland, maybe you try to go for the field at this point. Plenty of cards in the red-purple law's hand could be difficult overall to be able to KO these characters. You got four extra Dawn after the Norland to be able to try to take these guys out. Well, three extra, I think it's probably valuable to be holding on to the flame split and using it in this next turn on your defense. Going to be able to prevent one of these attacks from either Sachi Penguin or a Reiju because more than likely the law is going to be swinging five at some point, whether that's the leader or you know, one of these characters to start off the turn as the first swing. So, got five and four. Trying to think you could also go for life at this point. This 6k swing right here. Going to be going somewhere at this stage of the game. And just going to be a 2k counter. So, probably going at either the 5k characters or the law overall. Just an easy counter out regardless of where it exactly was. Interesting swing the six first overall with the Mont Black Nolans as this now 5k swing is going at the pudding. The pudding, you're like, you know what? Pudding did its job. It even got a swing in. I'm all right with that getting knocked out if that's one of the redirects with your Satori. So going to have two swings left with the Calgara and the other Calgara, the character, Going to be swinging seven at either the Sachi Penguin or the Reiju at this point. Could be trying to get the Queen to block overall, but it is going to knock out the Sachi Penguin and then the Kalgara now swinging, I would say, at the Reiju at this point. Maybe trying to hit that to be able to clear another body. You either get rid of that or the Queen. And either way, seems like a pretty good idea. But going for life. Instead, getting the Otama, so resting five using the Mont Black Noland effect and going to be passing off the turn to the Red Purple Law, gaining that life back once again. The Black Maria coming down after that Otama came down in life. The Red Purple Law doing a good job of keeping a ton of cards in hand, a ton of counter power as well. Now getting a couple 2Ks and also having some 1K business going on. And after stacking the Dawn as well, they've got an opportunity to play a couple blockers down, right? You have the Trafalgar Law, you have the uh, Tony Tony Chopper, and then off leader effect, you can even play the Kid Killer, right? Your opponent is at two life or less. So it makes sense to be able to play that character down at this point you could also do a late game black maria that we've seen a couple times in these opoa tournaments at the beginning of the set we've seen these red purple laws once their opponents are hitting nine ten dawn turns play these black marias late and using that effect to just get so much dawn boosted up all five dawn essentially staying in their side of the field so swinging five at the satori it is going to take a ko you don't have a lot of counter in hand, but you could have potentially used that flame split right there. So with the minus 2000 on the multi black Nolan putting it down to four, I would imagine that there's going to be a couple swings at this Mont black Nolan to be able to knock it out overall. So going to be thinking about where they should go on this right here. And uh, again, I'm kind of in this camp of like, we probably should have used Flame Split to save the Satori. It seems a little silly that we would have used it on Satori, but 
especially because it would have rested one of the Reijus, you would have had to only worry about one Reiju overall left in this turn, and you do have that Frankie, so could have been super valuable to be able to protect um, one of these two characters, right? Because the Frankie 2K gets out of one of these 5K swings, so it also forces them at this point of the game to choose okay, I need to either swing with the queen and leave myself open without this blocker or let that character live. So I, in my opinion, kind of, kind of, kind of punish not using the flame split, but let me know in the comments overall if you would have done the flame split to save the Satori in this scenario. It is, I don't know, I think it, it's kind of a 50-50. Usually you only like to use your boosting effects on things like the leaders overall, but especially as I played Nami in the past with the, uh... oh, this is a weird play, okay. So ended up saving the Mont Black Nolan, but pitched the Frankie on top of it instead. So that Mont Black Nolan now is a 5,000 power character, but you don't have any counter now to be able to get out of these swings if they decide to go with the queen or play the kid and killer. Thinking about playing the chopper, you do have three dawn. Overall, the Tony Tony chopper would be a nice card to play, especially because if you were to go into your next turn, right, and swing with the Tony Tony chopper, then you would be able to minus some characters and do some heavy damage. So ended up swinging the queen right here is going to be taking a knockout overall in this just just checking just checking the cards making sure that these aces do these aces have counter power no they don't yeah yeah i don't think so does this ace have counter power no i don't think so but going to be taking that knockout right there on the norland and so with the card in hand i think the tony tony chopper is going to be played down right there and then the leader effect is probably coming in right now going to not necessarily bottom deck anything but play a fresh new character in the trafalgar law the trafalgar law now you've established two blockers after swinging with that queen right there going to be going into the tendon turn now with just a shura and a dream at this point you're really thinking on this situation right now you're really hoping for well, even the um, the Shura doesn't get a Mont Black Nolan because the Mont Black Nolan is a Jaya character and a Botanist char type character, so doesn't exactly fit the Sky Island Searcher in Shura right now. And you've also seen three of them, so very unlikely you'd find one. So swinging seven now at what I assume is lead, going to be grabbing two cards, two K and a one K, Black Maria and the Pudding to get out of that one in the uh, Kalgara will be swinging eight eventually. Leaving two Dawn open, probably playing the Ace and Shura. I feel like at this point you play the Ace and the Shura, going to be getting some searching, maybe trying to find something like a Wiper, right? Like you could get a 2K Wiper in there, Wiper being a Sky Island card. You could get the Earth Won't Lose, right, could be a counter card with that one extra Dawn that you have in there to get 3,000 power boost on one of your uh, leader or character cards because you are the Shan... Shan... What is that called again? Shandian Warrior type in this. So we'll see exactly where they want to go. I think that's probably going to be the play that they make at this point because overall you are not surviving this defense if you do not take out some characters right here. So going to be having one, maybe attaching it to lead for a 6k swing overall. I think that might be nice to swing at like the Reiju or the Queen, just kind of force a little bit of counter out of it. And so this 8K swing now going at what I assume is Queen, and that Queen is going to be taking out right there. The 6 going on to the Reiju, and so maybe thinking about blocking, but is going to 2K counter out of it to get up to 7. That Ace is going to come down, get that rush because you're at 2 life or less, 
Swing at the Raju, prompting probably the Tony Tony Chopper block, right? Yep, it's going to be a little bit more valuable. You're not worried about any more swings on this turn, so really just continue to hold the power with the Raju having a 1,000 power advantage. And then that Shura is going to be played, going to be looking for a wiper of sorts, and El Thor could be nice, right? And El Thor is a Sky Island card, and like Radical Beam, is going to be 4,000 power. You do have one Dawn open, but going to be grabbing the Wiper instead. So grabbing that Wiper right there, I mm, I don't know. I think I would have grabbed El Thor overall, but does it say character card? Reveal one Skyla Island type card other than Shura. So I don't know. I think I would have played, I think I would have grabbed the El Thor because if you get some counter off of these couple life cards right here that could mean the difference in one of these because you need to defend against two swings overall so this 5k swing starting out going to be getting a life going to be a holly in hand so if there's another 5k swing right here you could counter out of it right with the holly and then the l4 would be able to get out of another swing right at this situation now there are kid and killers in the opposing red purple loss hand but i think overall it just gives you better math at this point you do have a 2k to be able to get out of this swing for the chance to potentially get an l thor off of the life right assuming that you're playing like a lot of other calgar lists three l thors could be something that you see leaving that dawn open for the different possibilities of you know, the Earth won't lose. Flame Split, El Thor, a couple different options. And so countering out with the Wiper, going to be another 5K swing. Taking a hit, it's a Frankie. So because they're at one or less life, they can play that Frankie down and draw a card. You know that there's going to be more, another swing coming, right? They have six Dawn open right now. You're like, well, that spells disaster, I would say at this point. Could be something off of this draw that can help you out overall. I don't know what exactly can help you out because your opponent is going to have two Kin and Killers hit the field, but obviously the Calgara player doesn't know exactly that. But going to play that Frankie, grab a life. It's going to be another Rush Ace. The Rush Ace haunting the Calgaro player, and with the Kid and Killer Swing, going to be taking that game, set, match, winning that one right there. Excellent, excellent showcase for the Red Purple Law, dealing with that Calgara and the life manipulation, the life gaining that it got in that game, especially because it's so early, got an Om Holly combo, and also right away got the Calgara Mont Black Norland combo in there. So interesting stuff in that game but let's take a look at some sample lists of these two players this i feel like is probably pretty accurate to the list that was played in the tournament this weekend the lists are not public yet at the time of this recording but this is probably pretty close to what we saw in here again with that calgara using the sky island engine has the ohm holly in here with the satori and sure right to do a bit of searching overall. We didn't see the strength of Upper Yard being able to also search in there. And then it's Synergy with the Wiper overall. Could have been really, really nice. Another just kind of search engine that this deck has. Has so much potential in being able to search out different pieces with the Shura being able to search the uh, Upper Yard being able to search the Wiper from OP06, I believe it was. Yes, in there. And then also the OP08 being able to search for something like the Upper Yard. So really cool list overall. Again, a different take on Yellow and probably the best OP08 leader to come out of the set at this point in time, especially with the Calgara, you know, manipulating, rushing different characters out while also taking life, right, self-inflicting life, but then also basing those characters on the number of Dawn that you have. So very, very cool overall. An interesting, intricate deck that I think is left to be explored. We'll see what kind of additions it gets. I know there's a lot of other 
kind of egghead pieces that are included in some of the Calgara decks that you'll find on onepiecetopdecks.com. So could be interesting to see what it does in the near future to continue to try to respond to Red Purple Law. But let's try to find a good Red Purple Law list with the Tony Choppers. So this is an interesting list that I found out that is a decently close. There's definitely some changes in here, potentially with the Khalifas, right? Khalifa, not a 2K that we really see alongside the Red Purple Law deck, but is something that could be nice with that draw to trash one. Just a little bit more draw in your hand. Again, like we've mentioned previously in the past, Red Purple Law decks really just having a skeleton at this point. Very consistent in a lot of these pieces that you see in the Black Maria pudding. Vinsmoke Raju, Captain Kid, Sachi Penguin, Queen, Kid Killer, Raise Max, Gordon. I would play four Otamas. I'd probably switch one of the Khalifas with an Otama right there. And then also maybe boost another Law. Law is a pretty good card in this format, it feels like, at this point, with the amount of draw that decks need to have in order to be able to succeed, right? We've seen this time and time again, that card hand advantage is so strong in this format at this point. We've seen games, especially in the previous tournaments, to where it looks like player A on the left is going to lose, but they have five more cards than player B on the other side of the field, and then player A on the left ends up winning the whole thing. So again, these aren't the exact list, but these are good starting points of ones that I think are pretty similar overall to what they played. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching. Next video, we will be back home in Las Vegas with the normal equipment, so look forward to that for the rest of this tournament. Probably not gonna be missing a day overall in these uploads, getting these out. And thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.